Zipline designs, manufactures, and operates robotic aircraft that deliver medicine to people in hard to reach places and save lives as a result. We primarily work with governments, particularly governments in the developing world that often have challenges delivering medical products to people who live in rural or isolated communities. Things like blood, rabies vaccine, uh, normal vaccines, oxytocin, th things that if patients need, you, you really need it in that moment because your life is on the line. We started working on Zipline as a product about two and a half years ago and we are actually just beginning to operate at a national scale in Rwanda this month. And so that represents the world's first drone delivery service that's actually operating in a routine way and at a national scale. Kigali Tower, Zip 24, how do you read me? Zip 24, Kigali Tower, I read you 5 by 5. So we're standing uh, by a launcher which has a zip on it and the zip is actually ready to fly and go make a delivery. The reason we use launchers and the recovery system that we're going to look at in a sec is that these vehicles don't have landing gear on them and it's actually not possible to build a runway in every place that we might want to deploy a system. So the zip basically uh, will, it attaches to the launcher here and then this launcher will tension. There's a bungee in the middle of this, uh, in the middle of this structure. And then when you press that button, it will basically accelerate the vehicle and the vehicle is flying autonomously and ready to make a delivery. Why was it designed like this? What were some of the safety considerations? So as I mentioned, one of the challenges of everything that we do is that if you want to be able to fly beyond line of sight and you want to fly over populated areas, which are two things that oftentimes regulators are uncomfortable with, you really have to be able to show that these kinds of vehicles can operate at a level of safety that's equivalent to a general aviation aircraft. Where are these things set up, the launchers? So basically, the launcher, the recovery system, as well as the shipping containers all form the distribution center. And we set up a distribution center near a, uh, usually near a medical supply warehouse. So we don't have to stock all the medicine ourselves. Really, the distribution center is designed to be kind of a magical technology that enables that warehouse to make hundreds of deliveries, instant deliveries per day to any location within a 75 kilometer radius. Today in Rwanda, we're focused exclusively on blood. And that might sound simple, but it's actually really complicated. The government of Rwanda delivers about 65,000 units of blood a year. 50% of that is going toward moms who are suffering from postpartum hemorrhaging. And then 30% is going toward kids under the age of five who suffer from severe anemia due to malaria. So this is like really important. It's a complete emergency. Someone's life is, is on the line when you need one of these products. But it's very difficult to stock these products reliably because you have red blood cells, platelets, plasma, you need all three. They all have different storage requirements, different uh, shelf lives. Uh, and then with red blood cells, you've got eight different types, A, B, A, B, and O, and positive and negative RH factor of each. So it's, an, it's basically an impossible logistics challenge. And so that what's so great about this is it allows them to go from trying to make these impossible predictions of what's needed where to keep the blood in one place and send it when you have a patient whose life is in danger. It's a vast simplification of the supply chain that actually saves the government money and can save thousands of lives in the long run. We talk about drone delivery for convenience and it's a lot of fun flying a Slurpee across the desert or a burrito to a college campus, but Zipline has the potential to save lives. 